There. Hi, I'm Neil Pickett, and we're here at the Los Alamos Makerspace, and we're going to uh, walk through opening up and putting together this Canakit Raspberry Pi 3 Ultimate Starter Kit. So. Okay. Right. Yep. All right, so here we have a, there's a help card. Uh, oh, wow, this is nicer than the one I have. This is a full-size um, breadboard, a breakout board. Uh, we'll go through what all these parts are in a little bit. Um, some various components, a nice case. There's the computer itself. Looks like we've got a micro SD card reader for talking to your laptop. That's a HDMI cable to connect to your television set and some jumper cables. So let's go ahead and open that up. We'll open the Raspberry Pi. And what is this? Oh, there's a card. This is a micro SD card. I was just about to put that back, but this is actually the operating system oh. for the Raspberry Pi. So uh, I'll take this out. I should be. If you're in, on a place with carpet, you're going to want to make sure that you're grounded so you don't sh static sh shock anything. And open this up if I can. There we go. So this is already programmed with the operating system. Um, you don't need to flash it or anything. You can just stick it right in the bottom here. You can see that. And there's not a spring or anything. It just kind of clicks a little bit. It's a soft click. All right, so that's ready to go. Let's um, let's see. The next thing we're going to want to do is the breakout board. So there's a, a ribbon cable, and here is the breakout board. And this is a real time saver, especially if you're just getting started out. This will plug into your breadboard. Uh, and you probably just want to leave it in there. Okay, there we go. You want to make sure that it's lined up. So there are a couple of pins that go on the top there, and then the ones in the middle go in there, and it will supply, this will now be a three volt rail and a five volt rail, and then all of these, and we'll talk about these at some later point, but um, this supplies all of the pins that are coming out from here, and you'll be using those pins in your projects and experiments. Uh, so this will go on this way. There's a there's a um, there's a little tab right there, and a tab on the ribbon cable, and you're going to want to make sure that those fit in. That's to keep you from putting it in upside down. Okay. However, there's not a tab on the Raspberry Pi, but there's a label there. And I hope I get this right. This J8, Jumper 8, is refers to all of these, and usually that's put near the pin 1. So pin 1 is this red thing on the cable, so we're going to put it on this way, and then hope for the best. We'll find out when we start trying to do things. If there's no power across here, then we got it wrong. And as long as we don't have anything connected yet, uh, it's not a big deal. We can just turn it around. All right, there's the case. Let's pull this back. Oh, I took this out and didn't explain what it was. These are heat sinks. Uh, so, so these these process the pro the two chips here will get kind of warm, and they'll need to vent heat. And this just make gives the place for the heat to travel up and radiate out, um, so that it's just a little bit more efficient than coming straight off of this flat surface. And these are really easy to put on. Just there's an adhesive sticker on the back, so you'll take the sticker off, and then it's black, and then just cram it on there. The orientation of it doesn't really matter, and you're going to want it to try to be as close as possible to the actual footprint of the chip. Uh, so this is, should be the same size as the chip it's going on, and try to make sure that it's not overlapping in one way or the other. And that'll make sure that it fits into the case nicely. And we'll do the other one. I'm guessing this is, the, I don't know exactly what all the components are. This must be the main processor. This must be the graphics. 
Okay, and there's the board. So I took this the top off, and the bottom should pop out with a little bit of force through any one of these holes. Yep, there it goes. And now I'm going to line these up. You'll you'll know right away which way isn't right because oh, we have to take this off. Because uh, really, only, all the things will only fit through one way. You can see that looks good. Mm -hmm. That's not quite so. So all right, there we go. And then stick the bottom on. And again, if you remembered which way you took it off, that'll be easy. Otherwise, you can just kind of tell there are these curved parts. This is not going to show up well on the video, but there are curved things here in this clear plastic. And then snap it in, making sure that it's, nothing's getting hung up there. So these were aligned OK. Oh. Oops. Let's take the card out. So the card was sticking out over the lip here. Um, so let's take that back out. There we go. Now I can put the card in. All right, it's, it's hard to see because it's clear, but there are actually little tabs coming out here. And the board needs to go under those tabs. So make sure you've taken the SD card out before you do that. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll be easier without it. And then, uh, then you can, then it should just snap together. There we go. Okay, so that's all put together, nice and solid. It's got little rubber feet, so it won't jump around. Let's put the operating system back in. There we go. And now we can put the ribbon cable on. And put the top on. And there we go. The last part to get this up and running is going to be the um, the power supply. And this is just a standard USB power supply. Uh, I believe it's a micro USB. That may not show up on the yeah, video. Yeah, it does. But, okay. <laughs> and there's only one place that this will fit, which is right here. So. We're ready to plug in. We don't have any power right here, but we'll walk over and then I'll show you how to hook up uh, an LED and make sure that everything's working correctly. Okay. All right, we've moved into another room where we can reach the power supply. Uh, so I'm just gonna stick this right into the wall. And there's a little red light that's coming on telling me that it's got the power, so that's a good sign. Uh, the, it'll, the operating system will take probably just under a minute to boot up. If we had plugged it into a monitor, which would have been an interesting thing to see, um, then we could have just showed you. It's you know it's it's full computer. It's booting up and everything. Oh. Um, but the main thing that we're interested that I'm interested in right now is just to see if I plugged this in the right way. And so what I'm going to do is open these guys, and I'm going to get a uh, red should show up pretty nicely. A red LED, and then just any old resistor. It doesn't matter. I'll use one of these. And the reason that we use a resistor uh, is because the LED will suck up all of the electricity that it can and get really bright, and then it'll stop working. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to put a little bit of resistance in here to keep that from happening. So I'm going to connect from this red side as the, po as the positive, and I'll hook a resistor up just kind of to one of these rows. All of these uh, rows are connected, so every pin on this row is connected to every other pin. And then every pin on this other side is all these, what is that, five? All five of those are connected. All five of these are connected to each other. But they're not connected across this gap. And then, so you have, what, 61 uh, or more rows of these five things. So it, it makes it handy. You don't have to use uh, jumpers. So now I'm going to take the long end, hopefully I get this right, of the LED is the positive and the short is the negative and put the long end in that same row that I plugged the resistor into and the short end next to it. Oops, I didn't get a jumper. All right, we'll just do this the, the dirty way. So I'll put the long end in there. I bent the pent the legs apart a little bit so that I could work with them, which is, oops, one in there, and the short end. Nope. <laughs> oh, I did it backwards. I put it in the negative. That's odd. Okay, so positive is blue. That's very strange. Oh, I put it on the wrong end. 
Here. Okay, well, that's good. We learned from mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. um, I put it on the wrong side of the breadboard. We'll find out when we start trying to do things. If there's no power across here, then we got it wrong. But I put it on 60, and it should have been up here on zero. So let's just turn this around. No, that's perfect, because... Um... When we do these, yeah. I, I like to see mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Those are mistakes people can make. Oh, I'm, so I'm even all about making people, mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mistakes are a great way to learn. In fact, there's even, a, I'm going through with my daughter, and there's a, there's a merit badge you get for blowing up an electrical component. <laughs> um, because it's scary when it happens, and you feel like you messed up. But no, that's, that's just part of learning. All right, so I put it on, let's put it on row 35 here. I've connected the, the positive side, the red side, to this resistor, and then it's on. And the resistor goes, goes either way. It doesn't matter which leg is in where. On 35, and I'm going to put the positive end of the, of the LED in 35.2 and connect it to the minus, and we should. Yay! Wow! Get a little light. So, it appears to be working. We haven't tested the actual operating system, but it's sending power out to the bus. Uh, and now we're ready to start doing... Uh, Causing mayhem.